Sometimes people ask, don't I get bored riding the same bike trails over and over? What you learn when you keep going back to these places is that they change all the time. The personality of the place changes, even with the time of day. As the light changes, you see the whole thing in a different frame. When I started guiding people, what I started seeing was that you see the place through their eyes. And when you start getting jaded and when you start getting to the point where this is just really familiar, you look at somebody else seeing it, and to them it's magic because they've never seen anything like it. Then you sort of wake up and you look back at what's around you and say, wow, this really is. You know, I shouldn't forget what I'm privileged to be in the middle of. One guy once looked at me after a canyon trip and said it was a life-changing experience for him. It totally recalibrated his estimation of what he was capable of doing. For you, it's normal. You've been down this a hundred times, but it never gets old because every time someone comes down that rope, they have this look on their face like, oh my God, what am I seeing? privilege to be able to introduce people you know to these worlds and honestly even if I don't have somebody with me I still go out there because I like it I came to Sagada first in 1983 at that time it was still quite remote the climate and the culture had a real appeal mid-90s, I was living in Manila and developed asthma. That's the time we sort of settled in, and later we went to Subic for maybe four or five years. But once they got internet in Sagada, we just sort of ran back here because then I could work here. I can work anywhere that I have an internet connection, writing as a journalist, film script writer, and practically anything else you can write. When you first come here, they just watch you for a while. And there's no sense of being rejected, but you're not really accepted either, and you're just there until people get a sense of you and until people become comfortable with you. And I think in my case early on, it was more because of the kids than anything else. And the people here will judge you by your children. The kids were well-adjusted, they went to school. They got along with everybody. They were academically and athletically accomplished. And people see that your kids are fine. They figure you must be okay. And I think that probably had more to do with it than anything else. People see you taking care of your family. Um, that's a very, very high priority in the local culture. When we lived in Subic, the kids were in an international school. They were only associating with uh, rather wealthy kids. And there was a real sense there of the social hierarchy, that some people are above other people and they're above them in all ways. And Sagada is really quite the opposite. The, the kids all pretty much mix. Um, the kids of the poor families, the kids of the rich families play together. They do pretty much the same things. They all do chores. They're all expected to work. They're not under control. People do sort of keep an eye on them, but they don't interfere with them. I mean, when the kids are out, they make their own decisions. They decide what they're going to do. They figure it out among themselves. And that gives them a, a range of independence that they don't get with constant adult supervision. Parents or yayas being on top of the kids every minute is that they never learn to sort out their own issues among each other. The attitude here is that unless there's an actual threat, unless there's actual risk to the children, let them be. Let them sort it out on their own. Once in a while, You'll hear, like, from Europeans or Americans that, um, oh, you older guys come here and marry young 
submissive Asian women. Like, you don't know my wife. <laughs> submissive is about the last word that anyone who knows Sigrid would use. And that she's probably one of the strongest individual human beings I've ever met in my life. And that you know, is something I have a lot of respect for. The only thing you see in people here is a, a level of strength that once they decide they're going to do something, they do it. They drill down and, and take care of business. If you look at the pre-colonial culture here, communities were run by councils of elders and your status in the council was determined by respect that you'd earned by what you'd done in your life. A lot of that had to do with how hard you worked and how well you took care of your family and how you related to your neighbors and how well you held up your weight in the community. All over the world, mountain people tend to be hardworking and disciplined and cooperative because you just don't survive if you're not. If you're always fighting among each other, you don't last very long. So there's a strong value on cooperation within the community and respect for each other and for hard work. In the colonial years, you didn't have the Spanish influence. And their first real contact with an outsider was American Episcopalian missionaries. One of their first priorities of the missionaries here was education. They introduced actually very high quality schools very, very early. So you had children who grew up in a very, very traditional culture suddenly getting really the best education that that era had to offer. And that actually worked out really well because these are people who respected their own culture and valued it, but were capable of interacting with the outside world on its own terms. And very few indigenous peoples in the Philippines have ever had that. And I think that's one reason why people here now are really in control of their own politics, their own resources, their own land, their own culture. Sometimes I miss the old Sagada I first knew in the early 80s. At the same time, I have to recognize that that old Sagada didn't offer a lot of opportunities to many people. A lot of people had to leave in order to find work. They want to do business. They want to send their kids to college. They want to earn a living here without having to go. There's certainly a question of, especially with tourism, at what point does it are the gains outweighed by the costs? And it's not something you just reach a consensus and make a single decision. It's something that evolves. And people are very much conscious of it. There's a lot of discussion of it, and there's a lot of discussion of changing culture. The conflicts about change are theirs. It's not being imposed from the outside. People are adapting to changes. Television and there's internet and, and better roads and there's tourists and everything else. Some people have to work out how to deal with that and they have to sort that out amongst themselves. But it's not someone coming in from the outside and saying, you have to do this. It's people here deciding how they want to do things. So it's really driven internally instead of externally. Quite a unique thing to find, you know, indigenous communities that are changing, adapting on their own terms. Some people come to Sagada or come to the Cordillera, and they come here expecting a stereotyped tribal culture where people live in grass houses and wear G-strings. What you're actually seeing is an indigenous culture that's adapting to the modern world on its own terms. And of course, people here don't see any reason why they shouldn't have a mobile phone and a Facebook account. You sometimes hear people say it's not authentic. But how is it not authentic? It's authentically what they are. We tell people now and then, uh, there's a museum in Bontoc, and if you want to see the museum, go look at the museum. This is a community, and it's alive, and living cultures change. The rest of us don't live the way we lived. 10 or 20 or 50 years ago, our language changes, the way we relate to each other changes.
I noticed the changes in Sagato, of course, and there are many. And sometimes I think all of us have mixed feelings about it. But it's part of what's there, and you just have to adjust to it. A lot of people from the outside move here and stay a while and leave. Sagata attracted birds with broken wings, and that people would come up here to sort of recover from one trauma or another and, and disappear. I don't think there was any doubt right now, it's probably the only place in the country I'd want to live. <laughs>